Hey, this is John Schneider with Fargo 3D Printing here at CES 2017, and I'm here in the Mark Forge booth to talk with Greg Mark about, well, you've come out with quite a few different printers since last year when we talked, so I'm just going to hand it over to you and give us the give us the quick rundown. Yeah, it's been a, it's been an exciting year, so we have, uh, we have the Onyx series, so this is, uh, so everything we do, uh, or now almost everything we do is carbon fiber based, so the Onyx series, uh, you know, the Onyx ones, you know, uh, great desktop printer, $34.99. It prints, uh, you know, really nice surface finish, chopped carbon, chopped carbon nylon. It was twice as strong as normal nylon. This is a surface finish of the part directly out of the printer. That's crazy. Right. Like, so seeing it's all like, that text, uh, we'll get a closer shot of that later. But yeah, that text is, you just, it's tough to get that out of any FDM printer. It's, uh, and then, so, and what, so what the carbon does is it gives you great resolution and gives you less deformation while you print. So you get a more accurate part and you get higher print completion rates. Okay. Right. You go up the line in the middle, which we don't have here. Uh, does continuous fiberglass, which gives you five times the strength. And if you buy the uh, the Onyx one, you can later buy the like for another thirty four ninety nine the upgrade to get that continuous glass. Okay. So if you the the whole point is that a lot of people start in three D printing and they want to start with a desktop, right. but then the, over time they want to upgrade and instead of having a desktop that like can't grow with you, we allow it to grow up the line. Yeah. So you can upgrade to continuous fiberglass or you can upgrade all the way up to continuous carbon fiber which gives you now 10 times part strength of plastic. Right. And this is the Mark II, it's our, it's our second generation machine. It uh, prints 40% faster than the Mark I. Uh, has like, can fill carbon in like 15 times more resolution. It's a beautiful machine. Very cool. Okay, so these are more of the smaller desktop machines. Oh, desktop line. All right, and then moving on, and we can move over into the other part of the booth here. Okay, so we just covered the desktop side of things. Now we're over with the industrial printer. So these are definitely larger. Uh, I'm guessing the capabilities are a little bit higher as well. So. I guess what, uh, tell me about these two printers. Okay, so the first one here, we have the, the Mark X. It's got three times the build volume of the desktop line. It's also designed for continuous operation. It has like shaft encoders on the, on the steppers, uh, things of this nature. The key feature here is it has a, uh, a laser on the print head that does in-process inspection. Okay. okay, so while you're printing your part, you can scan it and figure out the dimensions of your critical features. And the nice thing is because it's cloud connected, let's say you're doing your first part and you want to iterate on the, on the design, or you know, you've made 200 of these, now you have a factory in like Shanghai, you know, making tools and fixtures and you want to like make sure that everything's still in spec, you can do that online. So then if something is, uh, something shows up that it's not in spec and it's mid print, you just cancel the print and make adjustments in CAD and then move from there? Exactly. So, it's, you know, think of it like, you know, CNC machining. So in CNC machining, you know, your tools can wear and you have to do cutter compensation offset. For 3D printing, your nozzle can wear a little bit. The plastic can be a little bit wet. You can have slight variations. And what you, this allows you to do is part way through the print, you can correct that variation. Okay. Right. And then over time, you know, you can do process control which is nice. So carbon fiber, and then what are, are there other different types of engineering materials that can go into the uh, into the nylon aside from that, and what, what are some of the differences with those? Yeah, so you can do carbon fiber, Kevlar, and fiberglass. The carbon fiber is the highest strength to weight. The uh, Kevlar gives you abrasion resistance, and the fiberglass is uh, electrically inert. It's highest strength to cost also. Okay. So if you're making, uh, if you're making like satellite dishes and you want to like send signals through them, or not satellite, but like uh, RF dishes, and you want to send signals through it, you'll do fiberglass. If you want to like keep signals in, you'll do it in carbon fiber. If you want good heat conduction, you'll do car carbon fiber. So that, that's the Mark X. Then this one, uh, definitely very different from the Mark X. So, so, so this is this is our new Metal X. We're debuting it new at the show. Uh, what it does is it's a similar idea to our composite technology, where on the composite you have continuous strands of fiber encased in plastic that you then like remelt to make this carbon fiber parts. Here we have uh, a powder encased in plastic that you melt into layer by layer to build your part. And then when that when the part's fully built, you take it out and you and you uh, center it in an oven where you burn off the plastic and the and the metal uh, diffusion bonds together. And we call it uh, atomic diffusion uh, additive manufacturing, which describes how the little spheres like shrink together. So the shrinking is it consistent across different part geometries or how, how does that how do you plan for that? It's it's consistent and then we have some uh, and then the software does a little bit of analysis for where it places where it's not. So price point on a machine like this because metal 3D printing people hear that they start thinking you know quarter million dollars, half million dollars. So this this one's ninety nine thousand, uh, this one's sixty nine thousand or you can buy the bundle for one forty nine. And so right now, it's just one type of metal with the uh, with the uh, the metal X, or are there more metals in in process or planning? Or so it's currently it currently prints uh, stainless steel 17.4, which is what this is, and then 303, and then beta we have 6061 and 775 aluminum, as well as uh, titanium 64, 
uh, tool steels A2, D2, and M2, uh, and then Inconel 625. For the so, rocket guys. It's quite a quite a variety. So this is shipping today or fall? When a few customers have them already, the uh, and a few more betas will go out in Q2, but uh, the production units will go out in September. Um, I think you were mentioning earlier before we were filming this, but the uh, with the metal 3D printing, you're able to do internal channels. Yeah. So one of the uh, one of the unique things about this new process is that uh, this this entire brake lever is hollow. So we can actually uh, create this honeycomb pattern and print over it, which is not something you can do in a powder bed process. In a powder bed, this thing would be full of powder. You'd encase the powder in, so you'd have the weight, but because the powder is not melted, you have no strength. Right? Because we're depositing material otherwise in air, uh, you can make these hollow sections that are printed over. Right, so this would this is like a 50% air. We're making it 50% lighter than it would otherwise be. Right, and less material cost. Less material cost All right. and faster printing. All right, very cool. Well, Greg, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me, show me these printers. Very cool stuff. This is, I know 2016 was a big year for you guys. I think 2017 is going to be really fun to watch. It's going to be a fun year. All right, thanks again. Thanks for doing that twice. I'm going to get your pen. Yeah. Uh, or if this is the uh, onyx with carbon fiber and continuous strand in it. So like you can't, it's completely rigid. You can't, I can't flex it at all.